Hey, I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Give this video a like. We appreciate it. We also have a podcast below in the description. I need you to subscribe to that. And check out our friends at wineaccess.com slash ham. 20% off your first order. Send a gift today to a friend, to a family member, to a loved one. Wineaccess.com slash ham, 20% off. Promo came out for this week's episode of The Shop on HBO. Tom Brady was talking about the teams that passed on him in free agency before he signed with the Bucks, and he said this. One of the teams, they weren't interested in the very end, and I was thinking, you're sticking with that motherfucker? What's he talking about? Let's get into it. There's so many different uh, – everyone's trying to figure out, would he say that about Jimmy Garoppolo? Would he say that about Mike Vrabel's Titans? Who was involved in the end? What makes it hard, too, John, is there's like a bunch of different reports about who really was involved in the end. Um, at the time, it was hard to figure out exactly who picked Tom, who did who – did, did Tom want the Bears? Dan Patrick said at the time, Bears were a finalist. But then somebody said, well, no, it's too cold for Tom. Someone said the Chargers were in the mix, that he wanted to play for the Chargers. And then somebody else said, no – he only wanted to play on the West Coast if it was with the Niners because that's too far from New York where his son lives. Vic Tafer reported that the Raiders considered him as a potential replacement for Carr, but they couldn't bring themselves to offer the 42-year-old a bucks like contract after watching his recent game film. That was after Larry Fitzgerald Sr. reported that the Raiders were prepared to offer him like $60 million over two years. Tom Remember Kern, the Bucks gave him they gave him fifty million, twenty five a year. Twenty five a year, relative to his ability, is way under market value, right? But we find out now. At the time, there was some question, right, about how good is he still, right? That's what Tafer wrote. Yeah. But so there was some question. Yeah. The Niners did a deep dive. They didn't sign. The Niners thought about it. They didn't do it. Well, because he reached out to them, right? Said he wanted in. They did their due diligence for two days. My, my initial take is it's not Jimmy Garoppolo. Based on simply, they had just made the Super Bowl. Like, I just think that if Tom was using Jimmy Garoppolo right there, like, they had just won. To me, he sounds like he's talking about someone who hadn't been winning slash, like, what are you doing? I, you know, I to me, the team, really the teams that jumped out were two teams. The Raiders, like, he wouldn't, the Raiders wouldn't offer him a contract basically saying they felt more comfortable with Derek. Or the Titans who it felt like had a pretty good chance to land Tom, remember? And they, was it a Celtics game? There was a game with Edelman and Tom, and they FaceTime Vrabel. Wasn't that the thing? Kind of went viral. And so, the South, Vrabel and John Robinson. And then early on in that free agency period, they extended, maybe it was right before free agency started, they gave Tannehill like $65 million. Contract, yeah. To me, I either think it's Ryan Tannehill or Derek Carr because the Chargers don't fit the bill in the sense of Phillip was leaving. And remember his last press conference, like January 1, 2019, 2020, right? Right when that season, two seasons ago ended, he cried. It was over. It was clear, like this is over, right? They did not have a quarterback. Now, Tyrod was on the roster. Maybe it could be Anthony Lynn saying, listen, we're going to go with Tyrod, draft a guy. That to me is a possibility. So I'd go Tyrod, Derek, Tannehill, somewhere in some order. Pro if, if the Chargers really said no, we're going with Tyrod, that would make a lot of sense. That would right? make a lot of sense. I do kind of believe, though, that Tom would not choose the Chargers if he had multiple two teams to choose between, right? When you just think about the Chargers, he's going to go play for the Chargers. He's going to go all the way remember across he, the country. Remember part of it, Guy, and Florio, I'll give him credit on this one, was like, where are his options? And I don't think a lot of people... The Titans and the Niners are good examples. Teams that told Tom no. Tom, like, remember Peyton Manning when he did his kind of tour? The teams were lined up for Peyton off the neck. On this one, it felt like a lot of teams, turns out, were wrong. You know, it might work out big picture for the Chargers. And the Titans, I think, feel pretty good. But, I, uh, you know, I don't no. know. <laughs> they, they, they told Tom no. Yeah. Like, the Titans told Tom no. The Raiders told Tom no, and the Niners told Tom no. I to don't, me, he's talking about someone that a team told him no. Yeah. Not like the Bucks and the Chargers, it, in the report that you sent me, acted like they would have taken him. Obviously, the Bucks did. Same with the Chargers, if he would have said yes. I'm the a, Chargers would have had to take him. And, the, and, the, had. and the Bears would have had to take him. The Bears would have taken him in a heartbeat, right? I think. Adam Gase? Adam Gase. Sorry. Sorry, sorry Matt. He, Matt well, Nagy. He, he, <laughs> I apologize. He, he was Adam Gase was the offensive coordinator once upon a time for the. Uh, I don't know. I anyway. Um, 
I, they would have. I mean, they, you know, that offseason was when they it's added Nick Foles. Not fair to Matt Nagy to compare him to. No, I'm, I, again, I apologies, uh, but it's you know it's a bald brotherhood thing. But um, I the Bears I think would have done that. That was the offseason they added Nick Foles and went with Trubisky and blah blah blah, right? So they, I think the Bears absolutely. We just watched them do that deal. We watched them do the Fields thing. I think the Bears would have done that. So I don't think it's the Bears. I, I would so, tend to. A couple other things here. One, the way he talks, because I think there are some people, and this sounds, I don't think you're saying this. It's like, would he talk this way about Jimmy Garoppolo? Like, would he talk about him that way? Is one question that people have asked. And the other one that I would add is, when he says, the, the way he said it, I, I could see as the way you talk to somebody you know. Like, that's what makes me lean towards the Titans. It's like, that's the kind of thing you would say to Vrabel. If you're Tom, yeah. like, all right, dude, I know you got to do what you got to do. You really choose this motherfucker over me. Like, I could see that. The um, Titans make the most sense given the actions. Because it was like he might go. It felt like he kind of was going to go to the Titans. Then, boom, the Tannehill contract happened. I, I vividly remember that. Like, whoa, guess Tom's not in the play. I, You know, Tom you agree Curran, there? Yes, I, I do think the Titans were the team everyone thought. Tom Curran said. They had just beat him. Remember He's either playoffs. going to New England or Tennessee. That's what Tom Curran said at the time. Like, you're right. That's a good reminder. Like, there was, public opinion was New England or Tennessee. It's Ryan Tannehill. So, here's the other thing. I think Derek it's probably too, has been too good of a player in his career to get talked about that way, too, by Tom. Although, and I'll say this for Derek, I, yeah, I mean, he's not like a, he's not a scrub quarterback. But, and I, I'll say this for Derek, and I'll say this for Garoppolo, and I'll say this for every other guy. Tom's ability to view anything as a slight is we know is impressive. So if you told me, no, nah, it turned out Tom was talking about Deshaun Watson. <laughs> like, Tom wanted to go to the Texans, and they told him no. And Tom was like, you're choosing that scrub over me? Like, it wouldn't shock me. Tom could literally look at any guy, I think, and say, you guys are crazy for picking that guy over me. So I'll add I that agree. caveat. I know you don't necessarily agree on the on the Raiders aspect. I would be... I shouldn't be surprised given what Tafer wrote because I could see Tom, the second he hears that somebody watched his tape and thinks he's washed up, goes, scorched earth. You you guys are dead yeah. to me, and I, I have no conditions in my own head about what I would say about you. I do think Tom sniffed around with the Raiders, and like Vic said, I had heard the same things. They were uncomfortable with his age, which is fair, but ultimately he finds that out. Like you're telling him, yeah, we're not going to go. Because remember, they were reaching out to teams. Yeah. They were do they were aggressive. They were they were almost like a sales guy knocking on doors, which is not the way it happens for quote unquote blue chip free agents, right? If if Russell Wilson just hit free agency, it wouldn't be they wouldn't have to call a soul, correct? Not I'm just soul. using him as an example. Not a soul. Everybody would if, call him. If Jalen Ramsey, just pick any sweet player in the NFL. It was a little bit it's a little revisionist history because he won the Super Bowl and ended up throwing for 40 touchdowns and really looked fantastic the second half of the season. There were legitimate questions. Like I don't blame Gruden and Mayock for even questioning it. I don't blame the Niners for doing what they did. But six months later, like you can say they've proven wrong. Yeah, I mean, he had that bad interception against Miami. right? This is now back-to-back -back years we've had an all-time great quarterback that looked like he was kind of at the end and then came back, right? Brady and Rodgers did it. Are you talking the Week 17 bad interception, I think, to Eric Rowe? Yeah. That cost him the two-seed? Yep. And I think who somebody, I don't remember who it was, basically said, I've never seen Tom Brady make that mistake, like make that throw look like that. And part of it was the way, just the way his arm looked, right? I, well, I think if I was in Brady's camp, my rebuttal would be: Do you see the skill guys he was working well, exactly. with? He had to really, pr he had to really press that and force shit. And yeah, yeah, that's true. Did you did you see him once he got with sweet players? He kicked the shit out of everybody again, and they were right. Uh, all right, you can let us know who you think Tom's talking about if you disagree or agree uh, with us in the comments below, and like this video. We appreciate that.